China sails into disputed Japanese waters to intimidate a fishing boat. The NBA sells out to China. Even more. And France doesn't surrender. That and more on this week's China News Headline. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Japan says China is once again sailing near disputed islands in the East China Sea. And by once again, I mean it marked the 21st time this year that Chinese boats have entered Japanese waters. This time was more aggressive, though. Chinese Coast Guard ships sailed near the Senkaku Islands, which China calls the Diaoyu Islands, and tried to approach a Japanese fishing boat. So then, the Japanese Coast Guard came out to protect the fishing boat. This lasted more than two days. It is the longest period Chinese vessels have intruded in the waters since the Japanese government put the islets under state control in September 2012. Time to build those Gundams. It's not quite a Gundam, but Japan has just unveiled a new 3,000-ton submarine to defend itself against no country in particular. It just happens to come amid China's growing assertiveness in the region. Coincidence, I'm sure. You may have watched the U.S. vice presidential debate last week, and I think most Americans would agree it was at least easier to watch than the U.S. presidential debate in September. But it was not easier to watch in China. When Pence was responding to the question on China, CNN Signal went dark in mainland China while Pence was saying China was to blame for the pandemic. The signal only returned when Kamala Harris began answering. To be clear, that was China blocking the CNN broadcast, not CNN censoring the broadcast on behalf of China. I'm pretty sure. Speaking of the U.S., you might remember an episode we did back in August about how Hong Kong's rich, corrupt elite are screwed because of U.S. sanctions. I said at the time that things would get real when U.S. sanctions start targeting international banks, the ones that do business with those sanctioned Hong Kong officials. Well, things are about to get real. The U.S. State Department has issued a warning to international financial institutions that are still doing business with those officials that they could soon face tough sanctions. What kind of tough sanctions? Well, banks could be facing restrictions on U.S. loans, foreign exchange, property transactions, exports and transfers, in addition to measures against their executives. Yeah, if I were an executive at, say, HSBC, I would be worried right now. Here's a wild story. The Trump administration has been ramping up scrutiny of the Confucius Institute, saying it's an arm of Beijing, which is absurd. The Confucius Institute is a tentacle of Beijing. Anyway, an official for the Confucius Institute at Webster University in Missouri has been found dead. Police haven't given a cause of death. However, it did follow a police investigation. More specifically, the FBI searched his apartment amid a child pornography investigation. And that sure went in a different direction than you were expecting. And now, maybe you need a short break. Welcome back. If you think the Confucius Institute is too beholden to the Chinese state, how about the NBA? Mark Cuban, the richest shark on Shark Tank, and the owner of the Dallas Mavericks was on the Megyn Kelly podcast, a decision I'm sure he deeply regrets. Because she wanted to know, why is it that the NBA will tweet out, silence is violence? Silence is violence. Well, at the same time, the NBA has done nothing to condemn human rights abuses in China. After repeatedly dodging Kelly's question, Mark Cuban eventually said, you know what? Despite the genocide, he's fine doing business with China. Why would the NBA take $500 million plus from a country that is engaging in ethnic cleansing? Why would, so basically you're saying that no, nobody should do business with China ever. 
Why don't you just answer my question? No, Meg, uh, Megan, I'm just trying to get to the, the root of it. So why would you're the just NBA trying to do that? Why? You're because the one, you are the one who because said. Because they are a customer. They're, they are a customer of ours. And guess what, Megan? I'm okay with doing business with China. You know, I wish I could solve all the world's problems, Megan. I'm sure you do too, but we can't. And so we have to pick all battles. Huh. I wonder if the NBA calling out ethnic cleansing in China instead of taking their money would do anything to solve some of the world's problems. But I think my favorite moment was this. You condemn the genocide that's going on right now in China toward I the Uyghurs. I condemn all human rights violations. Why yes. can't you be specific? Yes, because the way proclamations work in this country, the minute you say them anywhere, you're going to use this as a headline. Cuban says this, this, and this. What's then wrong I with that headline? With Cuban condemns because, ethnic cleansing because I in China. Deal with the Cuban condemns ethnic cleansing would have been a great headline. Instead, the headline is, NBA's Cuban, despite genocide, China's a customer, and I'm okay doing business with them. But hey, good news. Chinese state-run media has agreed to broadcast NBA games again. That had stopped last year after an NBA general manager tweeted in support of protests in Hong Kong. But the NBA has really gone out on a limb since then to keep China as a customer. But. China's a tough customer to keep, and Korean boy band BTS is finding that out the hard way. They're facing a boycott in China because one of the members said something nice about American and South Korean soldiers who fought in the Korean War. Specifically, he said, we need to always remember the history of pain shared by the two nations and sacrifices of many men and women. But you see, inside China, the Korean War is called the War to Resist U.S. Aggression and Aid Korea, something you can also learn about at the Confucius Institute. And because of the BTS statement, a lot of companies pulled a Mark Cuban, saying, hey, China's our customer. We have to do business with them. We can't solve all the world's problems. Hyundai removed ads featuring BTS from Chinese social media outlets. And Samsung pulled a BTS-branded purple smartphone from its stores and websites in China. And the funny thing is, all this seems to have started because of a hissy fit thrown by my favorite Chinese state-run media, The Global Times, claiming BTS hurt the feelings of the Chinese people. I don't know. I think the Chinese people's feelings will be hurt more if they can't get their purple BTS smartphone. And in this case, the Global Times may have made a big mistake. I, for one, would not want to face off against the BTS army. And now it's time for another short ad break. Hopefully you'll get an ad for a BTS smartphone. Welcome back. BTS can't solve China's problems, and apparently neither can the Vatican. The Vatican is under fire for renewing a deal with the Chinese Communist Party. The deal allows the officially atheist Chinese Communist Party to appoint Catholic bishops in China, although the text of the deal has not been made public. It's unclear exactly what the Vatican gets in exchange. I assume they want the Chinese Communist Party to treat Christians a little better, but that doesn't seem to be part of the deal, since the Communist Party has just created a global blueprint for persecuting Christians. When asked about it, Pope Francis said, They're a customer of ours. I'm okay doing business with China. A new report from the UK has come to a shocking conclusion. And by a shocking conclusion, I mean the thing that everyone else already figured out. Huawei works in collusion with the Chinese state. All it took was a global pandemic to get them to publicly acknowledge it. And finally, and this will shock you, the French have surrendered to pressure from the Chinese Communist Party and halted an exhibit they were planning about Genghis Khan. What's that, Shelley? What do you mean France didn't actually surrender? Apparently. The museum is only temporarily delaying their exhibition until 2024. The reason? This would give it time to build a new exhibition featuring works from European and American collections. Originally, 
the French Museum was building an exhibit in collaboration with a museum in China's Inner Mongolia region. But because the Chinese regime is currently persecuting Mongolians there, and because of their increasingly unreasonable demands, the French Museum has decided it just doesn't want to be tied to the Chinese state at all. So what were some of China's uh, unreasonable demands? Well, in this exhibit about Genghis Khan, the Chinese authorities demanded that certain words, including Genghis Khan, Empire, and Mongol, be removed from the exhibition. Yes, come see our fantastic exhibit about a guy in a region who built a thing. You know the one. You'll love it. But good for the French Museum for standing up for their values. They're not okay doing business with China. And now, it's time for me to answer a question from one of you who supports China Uncensored through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Logan asks, I share your dislike for the panda. What are your feelings about the red panda? Logan, I'm glad to know that there are people like you out there who have accepted the truth about giant pandas. Nothing in life is black and white, except for pandas, which is why you should hate them. Don't fall for the proper panda, people. But what about the red panda, you ask? Well, despite the name, red pandas are not in fact related to giant pandas. You might have heard they're more closely related to raccoons, but even that isn't true. According to Scientific America, red pandas form their own phylogenetic family, which means, from a genetic perspective, red pandas are more closely related to skunks. And I would take a skunk any day of the week over a filthy panda. Thanks for your question, Logan. And if you'd like me to respond to your question or comment on the show for hundreds of thousands of people to hear, join what I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army and support us in the battle against the Chinese Communist Party. You can join for as little as a dollar per episode on the crowdfunding website Patreon. You also get some other cool perks as well. Head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored to learn more. Link is below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.